everybody? It's your boy back with another video. Welcome back to the channel, long time no talk. I hope you guys are all doing well, taking care of yourselves and staying safe out there. I know it's been a very long time since my last video and so many things have happened since then, uh, but I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to kind of give you guys an update of my closet because it seems like a lot of you guys have been following me since the beginning and all of our styles have inevitably developed, evolved, matured, progressed, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys what I've been working with recently. Now, overall, I've been focusing on finding pieces that I think I will be keeping for a very long time, a little bit less trendy, a little bit more timeless. So with that being said, there's a long video ahead, so let's get right into it. All right, so this is the first piece. My favorite piece of outerwear ever made. This is Helmet Lang, the 1999 Fall Winter M69 flak jacket. It's based on military jackets that were issued during the Vietnam War. Helmet's reinterpreted this piece beautifully using a vintage olive cotton canvas material stuffed with goose down on the inside. Key features include the standing collar, hidden zipper with the button placket, a single 3D cargo pocket, corset detail on the side, and there are also bondage backpack straps that Helmet is known for on the inside of the jacket. A size 50, which I believe translates to a size large. It's quite cropped in the body, but quite broad in the shoulders as well. And the goose down structure of the jacket makes it hold its shape really well. All right, so this beauty is the Visvim Kerchief Bandana Down Jacket. One of this new's most recognizable pieces, one of its most coveted pieces. I was able to acquire this in a size four, one of only 100 made this year. Super excited to have this in the collection finally. As I'm sure you guys are aware, this piece is basically made by scrapping together a bunch of vintage bandanas. You can see the differences present throughout most of the panels. Some of them are bluer than others, a little bit more purple than others. Each piece is totally unique. The pattern is totally unique. The interior has this kind of gory this trail of tears all over print, which I don't really know how to feel about, but overall, total reverence to Americana. Only as Hiroki would be able to. Super excited to have this one in the rotation. Another incredible piece. This is the Craig Green Fall Winter 2017 Tapestry Panel Workwear Jacket. Craig Green is a British designer who's recently exploded due to his kind of new take on workwear silhouettes, combining them with a bunch of different references, patterns, prints, colors, materials. During these seasons, Craig Green was produced in extremely limited quantities, so uh, good luck finding a larger size, but just know that they do run about a size large. I actually got a size medium. Now, despite having such a loud pattern all over and these crazy tassels hanging all over the place, I believe this piece is actually super wearable due to the fact that the white panels kind of serve as a contrast and they draw your eye away from the otherwise crazy pattern. This is a Margiela replica jacket. Margiela's replica line pays extreme reverence to the pieces that they are basically replicating. So they'll go and source vintage pieces from different eras all over the world and then they'll remake them with uh, Margiela quality of materials and sometimes they'll put their own little spin on it. But for the most part, they're extremely reverent to the reference pieces themselves. It's almost like high fashion knockoff. Now this particular jacket is a World War II era Marine Corps chore jacket. Extremely handsome, uh, herringbone texture used throughout and intentional distressing all over the collar and the arms lends it some vintage military credibility. This is my short sleeve nylon Prada shirt jacket. I don't actually know what category of clothing this technically falls into because it's cut like a vacation shirt with a wide camp collar, but it honestly feels like a light jacket to me. It's made out of a pretty durable nylon. Now, I love the utilitarian use of a material like nylon and Prada has done an incredible job of taking kind of this simple, often overlooked and cheap material and making it very luxurious feeling. I got this in a size large and as you can tell, it fits quite wide and boxy and oversized. And basically I always just wear this over a t-shirt tucked in to my pants. And for the most part, it's gonna be an all black outfit with the only contrast being the t-shirt underneath. And even then it's only 
a white or a blue or some kind of muted colorway. I've gone through tons of vintage tees in my time, but none really stick out to me as much as Pink Floyds do. Vintage Pink Floyd tees, in my opinion, are just absolutely perfect, especially when you can find that perfect one in grail, worn condition. Uh, and I think I've kind of done that with these two. Both are printed on vintage Brockham. And as you can see, they've aged absolutely immaculately. They both feature surrealistic artwork, just an absolutely perfect vintage cut. I particularly like the white one due to the way that the texture has become slubby over time. As you can see, there's irregularities in the way that the fabric has worn out. If you hold it up to light, some areas are more sheer than others. And I think this lends it really unique vintage characteristics. The graphic is washed out perfectly as well. So despite the fact that it's this crazy all over print on the front, it's actually quite subdued and it's easy to make this the only piece that stands out in your outfit, but also kind of layer something on top of it and make it seem a little bit more subdued. All right, I don't have any hangers for my pants, but the first pair of trousers that I want to show you guys is this pair of Fall Winter 2018 Techno Gabardine trousers. You guys might know them by the name of the Runway Flare trousers because my friend Ken famously made a video about them a little bit over a year ago where he showed off the black and beige pair. This is the brown pair, and while I do have the black and beige as well, I really love the dark, rich, chocolate brown colorway. Ken goes over the details of the fit really well, but basically it's made out of a really luxurious polyester, kind of tight up here in the upper half of the leg, but it flares out really nicely, um, and the material lends itself to the drapey nature of the pants. I stay true to size for a size 32, and I absolutely love the fit. Uh, the Margellas are kind of hard to come by, and they're quite expensive nowadays, so this, in my opinion, is the next best thing. This is a pair of vintage Wrangler workwear jeans. These are dead stock from the 70s that I actually picked up for a super steal on eBay. These are basically the same thing. They're made out of polyester. It's not quite as refined as the Margiela ones, but overall the idea is the same. It has a really similar fit where it's kind of tight up here in the upper half of the leg and then it flares out really nicely. Bonus points for this one because it does have the crease pressed into it, so it holds its shape really well, and it overall is a very handsome pair of pants. On these, I actually sized up to a size 33 because they fit really, really tight. These come in all sorts of colors, and they're relatively inexpensive, so if you're looking for a pair of simple trousers that you can wear every day without having to worry about wearing them, washing them, etc., to the same level of detail you might put into the Margiela pants, I definitely recommend these vintage Wranglers. These are a pair of unknown orange tab Levi's in this beautiful light brown, light mocha colorway. As you guys can see the Levi's orange tag on the back, but the model is missing, so I don't know what it is. I'm guessing it's a 505 though, because they fit really nice um, and they have a lower rise compared to a 501. I cut the hems on these, and as you guys can still see, they have a really nice length to them. They stack really nicely. I just washed these so they're a little bit tight, but in a couple wears, they'll be kind of back to their normal, perfect fit once again. And then in terms of sizing, uh, these are a size 34 by 36. I normally do size up one for vintage, so they only run about a size large. The waist stretches out after a couple wears again. I'll have to start wearing a belt. Speaking of belts, this is my favorite belt. This is non-native belt from, I believe, their Fall Winter 13 or Fall Winter 15 collection. It's their worker belt, which features an assortment of metal grommets throughout, which you can slide the tail end of the belt through. My good friends over at Good Art Hollywood gave me this little sterling silver charm, which I slid onto my belt, giving it that little extra uh, personal touch, shout out to them. But overall, really cool belt. I absolutely love the colors of the leather. It's stitched together, so as you can see, the ends will fray over time, and it's gonna lend it some really nice natural wear characteristics. The last essential item for my bottoms is this pair of Needles track pants from Fall Winter 16, I believe. Needles kind of went through its phase uh, over the last couple of years, and I've owned several pairs, but this is the one that I decided to keep simply because of how handsome the olive is. As you guys can tell, I'm a real sucker for 
neutrals. The crazy story with these is that I bought these from a Japanese proxy and due to a miscommunication between myself and the seller, I thought I was buying a size medium narrow, but it turned out that they were a size medium wide. I was shocked at how large they were, but because I love the color so much, I just took them to my tailor and she took them in just a little bit and they kind of have this cropped, wide, relaxed, kind of what I think to be like a quintessential Japanese cropped pant. I absolutely love these. I've been living in these recently, as you can tell. It's basically these socks and sandals are the indoor uniform for sure. Footwear game is definitely lacking uh, in the high top department, but I don't care enough to dish out heavy sums of money for like vintage Jordan ones. Um, but I did find these metallic navy retros uh, about a year ago, and I really, really like them. I feel like they're a very low-key retro. These are the Vans Vault OG LX checkerboard slip-ons. Now, if I was stuck with one pair of footwear for the rest of my life, I think it would genuinely be these. And you guys can flame away in the comment section about how lame these are, but as a Southern Californian, these are absolute staples. I keep like two or three of these in rotation at any point. Not much to say about these. Off-white canvas with an off-white midsole. Just super simple, goes with absolutely anything. You can beat the shit out of them and then beat them some more. Easy to slip on and off. You don't have to worry about laces or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm a lazy person and these are absolutely perfect for me. I've been wearing this shoe for like five years now. And I have no plans to switch up. Finally, these are my favorite pair of Visitum Christos. I did make a video on these last year, but I didn't really get to give you guys a good look at just how beautiful they are. So I hope this does them justice. These are the ICT North American exclusive um, Christos from last summer, released in extremely limited quantities. Um, I chose to get the white one simply because I'm a sucker for this kind of naturally aged looking off-white yellowed plastic and midsole look. Lends them a really vintage characteristic. As you can tell, I wear the shit out of them. I was a really long video. Uh, props to you guys for sticking around this long. Thanks for watching, it means a lot. Uh, let me know down below what you guys thought, what your favorite piece was, what your least favorite piece was, thoughts on the whole thing, uh, anything you guys wanna talk about, sound off in the comments below. And yeah, have a good day, you guys. Peace.